Okay, and we're back, and we're doing some Gauss's Law. Uh, this time, we're going to focus on non-conducting materials, or insulating materials. And this will be the case where you have um, solid non-conductors, solid insulating materials, um, which by definition cannot have currents. So what, what's different about non-conductors versus conductors, um, conductors can have currents, and if you're talking Gauss's law and static charge, there can't be any electric fields inside conductors. However, here, uh, it is okay to have um, charges within ma materials because since there, there can't be currents, um, it's okay to have charge, it's okay to have electric fields. It, it, you can still have static charge. Um, so for non conductors, these are the types where uh, we end up having these charge densities. And we, we use that symbol rho, which means uh, how much charge you have per unit volume. So um, most of the time, we'll, we'll have a uniform charge density, just meaning that this, this number, this rho, is going to be a constant. And we can use it pretty easily to figure out how much charge is within a certain volume of a material. So here's a pretty typical example. And we'll, we'll really have two different charge densities one for that inner ball um, with a positive charge, and then this, this shell is going to have a, a negative row, a, a negative charge density, negative three, uh, negative 3 Q total. Okay, So here's a case where if we'll, we'll start off in the inner ball, and let's suppose we want to find an electric field inside that region, inside that volume. Okay, if We draw our little dashed line, and our goal our job is to figure out how much charge is in that shaded blue region. Um, it's spherical, so we have the same starting point every single time. Electric field times the area of our Gaussian surface, which would be 4 pi little r squared, and it's always left-hand side, is equal to the charge inside that region over epsilon. So our, our job is almost always to figure out what to plug in for charge. Well, in this case, if we're given the charge density, okay, it's a number, it's, it's uniform, that's just row, um, row one, we just have to multiply it by the volume that we're talking about. In this case, it's going to be 4 thirds pi little r cubed. Okay, So that product right there, that, again, by, by definition, um, density times volume is going to give you charge. That's all we're doing. And so we can actually find out what our electric field is inside there. It's our density. Uh, let's see, the, the 4 pi's are going to cancel out. A factor of r squared is going to cancel out. So we have little r on top. And then that's going to be over 3 epsilon in our denominator. This is kind of a classic example. When, when you have a uniform density, your electric field is going to be linear with the radius. Okay. Now, if we go into the uh, into the gap, okay, if we go into this region between the the ball and the shell. Um, Gauss's law gives us a pretty quick answer. The total charge inside that is now the total charge of the ball, and it's a plus two q. So here, uh, this result is it's going to look like a point charge. It's 1 over r squared. Um, it wouldn't matter if the ball is a conductor or a non-conductor. When you're outside of it, it's just the total charge. It all looks the same. Okay. Um, but then the, but one of the trickier parts occurs when you go inside the shell. This is the part that will, will cause a lot of students some headaches the first few times they see something like this. Okay, so now what do we do? Um, it's non-conductor. It has a, another density there. Um, let's see what, what Gauss's Law gives us. Left-hand side, always the same. Right-hand side, we always have epsilon, it's 
So now we have to figure out what to plug on in our numerator here. What, what's the charge? Well, first, what, what charge are we talking about? Um, it's the charge inside that dashed line. <coughs> so really, we're, we're looking for how much charge is in this inner strip of the shell that goes all the way around. Well, if we look at our picture, the, the inner ball is inside that region, so there's a plus 2q. Can't forget about that. And now we've got this density, row 2. Well, charge is density times volume, so we're going to have to multiply by some volume. What volume? Well, the volume of that inner strip. So if we, if we took 4 thirds pi little r cubed, that would be the total volume all the way out to that dashed line that's inside the, the material. Now the trouble is there, there's a hollow part. Um, so we have to subtract the hollow part. So minus 4 thirds pi b cubed. Okay. And so you have that, that weird looking expression there. And if we just divide it through by 4 pi r, r squared, we'd have our electric field inside that non-conducting material inside the shell. Okay. Last but not least, if you're outside the whole mess, what do you have? Well, I'll write it down two ways. I'll write it down the, the long, difficult way. Okay, and that's that would be in terms of the density. So same deal. If we're outside, we we've got that inner ball, so plus two q. Well, now we're going to have this row 2 multiplied by the total volume of the shell. It would look almost identical to what we just wrote, only this time we'd have 4 thirds pi c cubed. Okay, That's the total volume all the way out to the surface, that outer surface. But we have to subtract out the hollow part where there isn't any of this material. So we could do it that way. Or, more easily, if we happen to know, uh, in this case, what the total charge of the non-conductor is, that's negative 3q, we can make it a whole lot easier and just say your total charge is the plus 2q minus the 3q of the repsilon, and then you could solve for electric field. Okay. So once you get the hang of it, it's, it's not it's not terrible. Um, you know, it's it's a it's a number, it's a density and we just have to figure out what volume to use uh, in order to figure out the charge that we're talking about. Okay, so hopefully this example will will uh, help you and, and fix that up a little bit and show you how to do it. And until next time, uh, we'll see you later.